Hi, it's me, Jessica. I am 33 weeks pregnant right now, and I am about to have my fifth experience with childbirth. So <laughs> I wanted to share with you guys my previous labor and delivery stories and experiences and answer some questions. I'm on a bunch of message boards right now, or I like, I lurk on pregnancy message boards. And I see so many people who have questions about what labor and delivery is really like and recovery and just like kind of all of it. First of all, I really want to emphasize that everybody is different. Everybody's experiences are different their bodies are different. What I've gone through is in no way a guarantee of what you're going to experience. I do think it's great to get a variety of stories out there. And I also think it's really neat because I have had four deliveries and, and they've been different as well. There are some things now that I kind of have come to rely on that I know my body does, but I've also had really different experiences and I think that that's cool because I can actually compare um, what it's like to get an epidural versus what it's like to not have any medication at all, and versus what it's like to have Pitocin, which is something that will induce or start up your labor, and then also not have an epidural. I'm seeing a bunch of questions like that on the message boards that I'm lurking on, and I figured I would kind of just share my personal experience. And again, like giant disclaimer, my personal experience. You do not have to base anything that you do off of me. I really don't want anybody to feel judged off of like my experience either. Like your story is your story and it's beautiful and wonderful, however it is. So please embrace that. I hope that this is just kind of a fun and educational video for people who are curious about what someone's labor and delivery experience could be like. Does that make sense? <laughs> I think that's so important, which is why I'm emphasizing it so much. It's like really important to me to never make anybody feel any judgment or fear or like, why wasn't I like that? Like, that's not what this is about. Everybody's different. So I got a bunch of questions off of Twitter and Christina wants to know what has been the same and what has been the majority of differences between your labors? Also, have you ever had an epidural? So I've given birth four times to Bailey, who was seven pounds, 11 ounces. She was my smallest and my first. She was induced, which means that I took something called Pitocin when I was 39 weeks pregnant, and she was my one experience with an epidural. So I went to the hospital, got the Pitocin, things were going great. Somewhere in the middle of the night, they said, well, the anesthesiologist has to go to bed, and it's really trafficy in LA because that's where she was born and he probably won't make it back in time like if you do start feeling pain. Because at that time, I still wasn't feeling pain from contractions. So I didn't need pain relief at all. And I was kind of like, it was my first baby that I was having and I had wanted to feel it. I had wanted to like really feel contractions and see if I was gonna have like a, a no pain medication delivery, but I was also totally open to an epidural. They were like, look, you've got to do this now, or if it really starts hurting, you probably won't have an option, which I've heard happens to a lot of people. Like they get put in that position. So I decided in that time, okay, fine. I'll just get this epidural. I'd wanted to see if I needed one or not, but I was just like, all right, fine. I'll get this epidural. But I was a little nervous about it and I wasn't feeling a need for it. And I think that that's really, really important. I feel like if I had been in incredible pain, and needed it, I would have had a different experience of an epidural. But basically, I got one, I was a little bit nervous, I had a little anxiety when getting it, but it was okay. And then there was a lot to it that I didn't realize would, would be necessary. And this was 12 years ago almost, so things might have changed, but this was my experience. They have something in your back, like a tube or something, I don't know, I didn't see it, it was in my back. It numbs you from here down. I didn't really think about what that meant, so first of all, it meant that I was having to position myself in a way to accommodate there being like something in my back and I'd have to go to the side and I'd have to move. That was uncomfortable for me and it wasn't something that I liked. And again, I went into it feeling fine and not feeling in pain to all of a sudden now I had to be accommodating for something like weird in my back. And then my feet were really, really tingly. They felt like they'd fallen asleep. And I had people coming in like Christopher and maybe Colleen and Rachel and you know, all my, all my family were coming in and like, I'd have them like hit my feet and like kind of rub at my feet because they just felt so uncomfortable. This is not common, but it happens and it happened to me. <laughs> so I went from a place of 
not uncomfortable to getting the epidural and then feeling uncomfortable. I also needed to get a catheter because you can't feel anything anymore. So there's a chance you're gonna pee the bed. <laughs> so they put a catheter in you to kind of like empty you out. And I was nervous when they told me that, like I was like, ooh, really, that's gonna happen? But actually of all the things, that was pretty awesome because it was like the first time in nine months that I wasn't having to get up to go pee like every five seconds. So I was kind of like, actually this is awesome. <laughs> So that was kind of more fun than I had anticipated. <laughs> Finally, my water broke at around 9 a.m. And all of a sudden it was like go time. Like I dilated, everything happened like all at once right after my water broke. Once my water broke and it was time to push, it was me and Christopher, the doctor, there were some nurses around. What was really, really neat about having the epidural was that we got to fully focus on the baby being born. <laughs> so Christopher was like down there with the, near the doctor and, and he was like, oh my gosh, she has hair. Like he could see her head coming out and it was like this really cool moment where, where it was like, you know, I was like, oh my gosh, Christopher, do you see our baby? And they'd be like, push, I'd be like, oh, okay, I'm pushing. But it wasn't that bad. It was, it was kind of, it was just like a really fun, joyous experience where we were really focusing on the baby. Obviously it was taking effort on my part. <laughs> I didn't push for too long, so I wasn't like totally exhausted, but it was like, okay, I'm pushing now, okay. It wasn't like excruciating pain because I had the epidural and it was fun because I was hearing about my baby for the first time and our baby was about to come into the world and like Christopher got to be down there and I was like, oh, tell me everything. Like <laughs> what's going on down there? It was really, really cool. And then she was born, yay. So the other thing that I noticed about the epidural that was kind of a bummer for me was a few days later I had like a bruise and it was still bothering me like while I was recovering so after having Bailey I still was like being bothered by the bruise and that's not normal either it was just my experience with the epidural I had this bruise that really kind of hurt for several days later so my next birth was Jacob and he was I think eight pounds one ounces but I actually don't even know because they switched it at one point, so now I'm like all confused. He was like eight pounds to eight pounds, three ounces, somewhere in there. He was also born at exactly 39 weeks. So Bailey and Jacob were born basically in the same day in pregnancy. I did not get induced for Jacob. Of all the labors, Jacob was the one that I actually knew I was in labor for. I remember we were sitting down and we were playing a little board game with Bailey and I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I started feeling stuff. And then I went to the bathroom. I lost my mucus plug. That's a thing. Sorry if you've never heard of that. <laughs> Basically, it's a plug of mucus that is kind of a lot <laughs> that plugs up your cervix. You can lose your mucus plug like a week or two in advance of giving birth. It's not like an absolute you're in labor sign, but it's a strong sign that you're getting close. And in my case, for this situation, I was going into labor. I was like, let's uh, find somebody to watch Bailey and go to the hospital. So like about 20 minutes later, we were headed to the hospital. They checked me, they said, yep, you're five centimeters dilated. You're definitely in labor. I was like, cool, this is awesome. I think it was around 8 p.m. Family was coming and hanging out and I, I was still handling it well. Like I didn't feel like major, like, ah, ah. I can always talk through my contractions until I get into active labor. I was just kind of like, yeah, I think this is a contraction. Oh, hmm. <laughs> like, that. I remember Gwen and Trent, Christopher's brother and Christopher were all in the hospital room with me. And I was kind of like, oh, and like, <laughs> I think my water just broke. I can't, like, I can't even remember what was going on, but I just remember like, oh, my water just broke. And I'd love to hear what other people say about this, but I feel like when my water breaks, I can hear it. Like, I feel like I hear this pop and I don't know if it's like an internal, I'm hearing it, but I feel like I hear a pop and then like a glug, glug, glug. <laughs> And that's been my experience every time, but I don't, I'm really curious if other people like actually, if that's true or if I'm just imagining it. But so all of a sudden my water broke and the next contraction was like, yes, I feel this. Oh my gosh, I'm in pain. Everybody get out of this room. Like what is going on? And for me, apparently when my water breaks, often I will like dilate almost instantly to like, it's time to push, it's go time. So we really learned that with Jacob because <laughs> I didn't have an epidural, I, ha I had been feeling fine. And all of a sudden my water broke, my nurse checks me and she's like, yeah, you're 10 centimeters dilated, it's time to push. I was like, oh, are we, so we're not even talking epidural? She's like, nope, <laughs> like we are past that time. I'm like, all right, let's do this then, like, let's go. There's a stage in labor called active labor. And basically you transition into active labor. So I went from this sort of like mild contractions that I don't feel much, a lot of women really, really, really feel those contractions. And that's why 
the epidural is an option because when that is extremely painful and you're having excruciating pain for hours on end, it's an awesome thing to be able to have an epidural as an option. However, I don't really feel that. My body moves really quickly through the active labor stage and then all of a sudden I'm fully dilated, it's time to push. And that is definitely painful. <laughs> like, definitely I can feel it. I get into this point where I'm like not even really present. I know nurses will ask me to do things like, oh, can you do this? And I'll be just like, nope, I can't do anything. Like I can't move. It's like very different, strong pain. But it's really short for me. Basically, I get into that painful place. I push through a few contractions and typically the baby gets born. But this was my first time experiencing this with Jacob. I didn't know what to expect. So all of a sudden they're like, all right, like it's time to deliver, it's go time. And I heard them over the like, like speakers at the hospital going, can we get a doctor, any doctor? <laughs> Is there anyone who can deliver a baby who can be here? I'm like, oh, okay. And <laughs> basically that was my first time having a nurse delivery. My doctor did not make it for the delivery. She even said, I had my shoes at my door, I was ready to go. And I think, I think she had 10 minutes to get to me and she didn't make it in time because I went so quickly from like, you're fine and talking with family to like, there's a baby here. So that was my first experience with completely natural delivery. I didn't have any Pitocin and I didn't have any epidural. So the thing that really surprised me about having a non-medicated delivery was that with Jacob, I could feel him wiggling like the way he would up here in my birth canal, like as he was coming out. And I really felt it the most with Jacob. So I don't know if everybody feels that either when they're not having no epidural. I was just like, ooh, <laughs> like it kind of felt weird because I could feel those movements, but they were definitely like in my birth canal. That was, that was unexpected. The other thing was it was a really different experience from when Bailey was born because instead of Christopher being down where the baby was, he was up here in my face, like taking care of me because I was definitely more focused on pain management than I was when I was having Bailey. So I always try to talk to people who are like considering epidural versus no medication. And like, especially people who are really biased against an epidural. So I don't know what the climate is like now, but when I was first having like Bailey and Jacob, there was this huge movement based on like a bunch of documentaries coming out and stuff of people who were like very anti-epidural. I always think that's a big bummer. I think that modern medicine, like epidural, C-section, Pitocin, like all of it is, they're all great tools that we have. And I'm grateful that we have those tools. I don't think everybody needs those tools, but at the same time, I'm so grateful that they're, they're there and available. After having an epidural birth, versus uh, non-medicated, there was a really cool special thing about the focus being on the baby and the baby being born versus the focus being on me getting through my labor. However, I, I will say I do try to avoid an epidural just because my experience was more discomfort than it was an alleviation of pain. But if I were to be in major pain the way I am when I'm in active labor for an hour or two hours, 100% I would say yes, bring on that epidural. Like we are ready for this epidural. But it's just not typically my experience. So that's why I go non-medicated typically kind of. I'll get into that in a second. So the other thing that surprised me about having a non-medicated delivery with Jacob was actually how much afterward, and I'm talking about like right after, he comes out and that was, that's an awesome relief. Like it's really cool that feeling of like, the baby coming out because you're like ah, and then it's like blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and the baby comes out and you're like whoa it's like it's, it's a really neat like feeling of relief blah, 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 blah. but oh my goodness my bits stung they stung so bad and it was because i didn't have major tearing i've never had major tearing but i've had enough where they go like, oh, you need a stitch or two. And then I'm like, okay, whatever. I don't even know what you're talking about. Do it, do your thing down there. It really stings. And if you think about like having a cut in your nether region and then them sewing it up, like you want medicine for that. <laughs> so actually at that point, they um, they give me like lidocaine, I think. They, 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 do, they do some sort of topical anesthetic and I, I'm like ready for that. And it's so funny because I don't, really feel like I need an epidural or I don't feel like I need like too much going on while I'm birthing. 
But like right after, I'm like, sure, <laughs> numb whatever you want. <laughs> I don't wanna feel all that. So many people talk about it being like a relief after you've had the baby. And for me, when I was non-medicated, I could feel like a lot of stinging. And I wasn't expecting that. And I was glad for the pain relief. <laughs> so that was Jacob. Parker was my whopper of a kid. He was nine pounds, nine ounces. He was a few days overdue. <laughs> Going into labor with him was complicated. I couldn't tell if I was in labor for so long. Actually, Colleen has a video on her channel of, of like kind of a little bit of my birth story, but I get an irritable uterus, which means that like I get random contractions. And I also don't feel the contractions until I go into active labor. So I, I get really freaked out not knowing whether or not I'm in labor. And I had been walking at five centimeters. So that means that I had like two weeks where I was walking around at five centimeters, which for a lot of people means you're in labor, go to the hospital. And for me, it means like, just hang out, just wait it out. And my doctor at the time really wanted to induce me and like put me on Pitocin and just like make things regular and just get it done. And I really wanted to avoid that. I wanted the experience of like going into labor. I think that's really fun. Even though I'm really stressed out and like annoying the whole time, but um, I do think it's fun. I also knew from having Jacob that I could do it without medication. And I'd always heard like, if you're on Pitocin, the contractions get so much more painful because it's like a forced chemical reaction in your body that it, first of all, it's just like way more painful. And then also there's little chance that you would do it without an epidural. And I was just kind of like, I was a little nervous about all that. I go to the hospital at one point going like, am I in labor? They're like 100% yes, you're in labor. I'm like, okay, if I call my family, I better be in labor because they're gonna be coming from out of town. Like, make sure I'm in labor. And they're like, 100% you're absolutely in labor. And then like four hours later, everybody gets there and they're like, mm, we don't really know that you're in labor anymore. What are you talking about? <laughs> like, you promised me. And they're like, yeah, we don't know. We don't know what's going on. I think you've got an ir irritable uterus. Basically, I did. And they got to a point that where they did talk me into going on to a lighter dose of Pitocin to even things out and just make the contractions even. I did that. I was reluctant for a long time, but then I finally got the Pitocin, was still feeling kind of fine, kind of like, oh, okay. Doctor came in and she checked me out. And I think I was like seven centimeters dilated and like talking and fine. I feel like she broke my water. So I, I think she went in and actually broke the water that time. And then within like a half an hour, I started doing that like rapid progression. And I didn't know. We, the nurse was like, are you gonna want an epidural? What do you think? And I was like, oh, I'm doing okay. It's starting to hurt, but like, I think I'm fine. I'm gonna get up and go to the bathroom and then we'll talk about an epidural. So I got up from my bed, walked to the bathroom, went to the bathroom and <laughs> basically couldn't get up from the toilet. I was like, I'm gonna need that epidural, honey. <laughs> and Christopher like helps me and I'm like, <sighs> I just met, I just remember like getting myself to the bed and I had just seen the nurse like three minutes before or something. And I'm like just trying to get to the bed and just being in massive amounts of pain. Christopher gets the nurse somehow, I don't even remember. The nurse comes in and I'm like, I think maybe I do want that epidural. Like all of a sudden it got really bad. She looks and she's like, yeah, you're actually ready to push. There is no epidural happening here. It's like, oh, okay. And that actually was a huge relief because I was like, oh, that makes sense. I'm feeling transition, I'm in active labor now. I was still pretty out of my mind. I remember feeling like really, really hot. And I was like, Christopher, get me washcloths. And I remember him like, getting me washcloths and wetting them and like putting them all over my face. And I was just like, all of a sudden felt really, really hot. And I needed to be like, to get all these washcloths. And he was doing that. And again, really focused on me. The doctor came in. I was a little, feeling a little salty at this particular doctor at this moment. She's not my doctor anymore. I didn't like the way she handled, like trying to push me on Pitocin and push me on a lot of things. I remember <laughs> I started pushing at, <laughs> I remember seeing the amniotic fluid like squirt at her <laughs> and she dodged it a little bit, but I was kind of like, <laughs> I was like really happy about it. I was like, ha ha, gotcha. <laughs> anyway, I squirted out a little bit, got her back <laughs> for not being really nice to me earlier. I remember them saying, don't push and really, 
that being the first time I realized like there are times when you're not supposed to push. It's really important to listen in the labor and delivery room <laughs> because there are times, like you kind of want to just go at it be like, I'm gonna push this baby out. It's gonna come so fast. I'm gonna do it one push. We're gonna bam this out. But like really, there are times, I don't totally know what they're doing. I think sometimes it's like moving the umbilical cord from their necks. I think in Parker's case, I think he was so big, they wanted to make sure his shoulders came through and like his collarbone didn't break because that can happen in labor to babies. So I think they were navigating that. I just remember being like, oh really? Like, are you sure I kind of want to push? Like maybe I should just push and sneak out a push. And they were like, no. And I was like, okay, all right, I'll hold back here a little bit. I didn't push and then I did and he came out. Oh, and he was fine, he was perfect. He was very red. I remember him, he's like, was bright red. And I think that was because he'd cooked for so long. Like he'd been in there and he was a little overdue. So he's this like big chubby red baby. And because he was over nine pounds, they had to test his blood sugar every hour for like three hours and it was fine. But I will say, I do think those contractions were probably the strongest, most like intense contractions that I had. And I think it was probably because I was on a bit of a dose of Pitocin, but I survived it. And I was able to do the Pitocin and no epidural. And a lot of people will kind of scare you out of that and say like, you can't get Pitocin and then not have an epidural. It's just too terrible. It wasn't too terrible. It was a lot, but it, it was okay. And again, for me, it was like 10 to 20 minutes of a lot of pain and like weirdness but I wouldn't have done it any other way. So then we have Duncan and I actually have a vlog up on our channel if you wanna check that out. It was a really cool experience because my water broke when I wasn't at the hospital. That was my first time that's happened. And Christopher and I were out, we just had a little lunch. I stood up, I heard like pop, glug, glug, glug. And I luckily was wearing leggings. So all of the amniotic fluid and stuff like stayed in the leggings, but I like booked it out <laughs> of that deli. I was like, let's get out of here. I don't wanna be the lady whose water just broke on the floor of this deli. We ended up getting to the hospital. I was really worried at that time that I was just gonna like give birth in the car because my experience had been water breaks, baby shoots right out. However, and, th and that's what I told the hospital. I was like, this is gonna happen any second. However, it didn't. I think Duncan was just like up and floating. I had a ton of amniotic fluid because I had something called polyhydramnios in that pregnancy. And I have it again for this pregnancy, which just means extra amniotic fluid. And we didn't really know why he wasn't like descending into my pelvis and like birthing. So I was like on a birthing ball a lot for that, which I'm really glad I didn't have an epidural at that time because if once you're on an epidural, you're not walking around at all, you're not moving. And this was my first time using a birthing ball during um, labor and delivery, but I really think it helped so much to help get him down. So my other deliveries, I don't think it was necessary, but with Duncan, I was like really, really grateful. And we covered it in towels and stuff. And then there was just like amniotic fluid, like dripping all down the room, like down the towels around, all around me. There's like amniotic fluid everywhere because I really did have a lot. And again, we were hanging out in the room, people were around, and I got to a point where I was like, ah, all right, I have to admit that I'm uncomfortable here. And I was like, yeah, you guys, I'm really starting to feel it. <laughs> so can everybody leave? I was like, oh, Christopher's getting gnarly. Like, can you call the nurse in? We should maybe chat. She checked me and she was like, yep, you're ready to push. And I was like, all right, let's go. I got onto the bed. At that point, it was again, kind of like Jacob, where they were like, do we have a doctor anywhere? They called my doctor, but he was like on his way. I think he was like in the parking lot. He told me later, like he was like, I was running. I was like trying to get there. But again, this one was another nurse only delivery. And what happened was when he came out, he actually had the um, amniotic sac around his head. And the nurse said that she thinks maybe that's why it slowed down. Like my water must have broken like from somewhere up here or something. This is her theory, I don't know. But the amniotic sac itself was still intact where his head was. And she was like, maybe that was like slowing it down and kind of plugging him up. That's so cool. Like I wish I had seen that. Bailey and Christopher got to see it, just that his head was born with the, it's still in the amniotic sac. And then he, he had the cord wrapped around his neck a couple times. And I didn't say this before, but all of my kids have had that. I think going into having a baby, I thought that was like a worst case scenario, like super scary thing. But actually, at least for me, it's 100% normal. And I think for a lot of people, it just is very typical for that to happen. And the nurses and doctors know how to handle that. So don't be scared of that. Like they do know how to work with a cord being wrapped around the neck. All right, so Duncan comes through. The nurse is a rock star. I think they got to a point where there was one more nurse in the room. But I do remember being in so much 
pain and so tense that they were like, can you please just like try to scoot up? And I was just like, I can't, like my hands are stuck to the bed. I can't move. I really want, I was so stressed because I was like, I want to make this delivery as best for you and like safest for the baby, but I physically cannot move. I am stuck to the bed and my muscles were just so tensed up from, from the pain and, and being where I was at in the labor. And I try so hard to remember my labors because really, you get into this zone. I don't think I'm like a screamer or like super loud, but I don't even know. Like I'll ask Christopher after like, was I was I screaming? Was I upset? What was I like? And he'll just be like, no, like you were, you were good. Like you were, you could hear you, but I don't know what, I don't know if he's telling me the truth. Like I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know what I'm like. I just get very much in this zone where I'm like, mm. Duncan was born. He was eight pounds, four ounces. I remember them saying that and me going, oh, he's so tiny. Just because I'd had Parker before and he was like a pound and a half almost larger. And um, eight pounds, four ounces seemed like it was gonna be a much smaller little baby. I remember they were just being like, what? That's not tiny at all. And I was like, no, it really is much smaller than my last one. And then the doctor made it in to deliver the placenta. And I should say also that time with Jacob, when my nurse is delivered, um, the doctor made it in to deliver the placenta as well, so. And that's a whole other thing. You're kind of like, you get to a point where you're like, okay, I just had the baby. And then they're like, okay, placenta time. And you're like, oh, okay. And then you like gotta push that out too. But that's not a big deal. It's significantly less of a big deal than actually birthing a child. But it's kind of like, come on, I just did the thing, guys. Like, I gotta go do this too. That's the big overview of all of my labor and delivery stories. I've never had a C-section. I don't, it could be a possibility. It was definitely a possibility with Duncan. And it was a concern for Bailey, which is why I initially induced because she was measuring larger. My stomach was measuring larger. Christopher and his family were all like giant babies and his mom needed a C-section because they were so large that we really didn't know um, what to expect with Bailey. But now I, I kind of like, I have confidence that I can deliver a bigger baby, but then there are a lot of variables. So the polyhydromnios I have means that I have a lot of amniotic fluid, which means that the umbilical cord could potentially come out before the baby, and that's like automatic C-section. It's definitely possible. I'm bringing it up because C-section and extreme tearing are my two biggest birth fears. And I think in part it's because I've never experienced it. So even though I've had so many deliveries, I also feel like I'm in the same boat as someone who's never had it because I, you never know what to expect. And I still have that fear. And I know so many people who've had C-sections who are like, no, actually I prefer it. Like it was great. They're my superheroes, you know, like they're the people who have done the thing that I'm scared of doing. Or even like Colleen had very severe tearing and she, I felt like she handled it so well. That's always been on one of, on my list, my two things that I'm like, really scared of. And with the C-section, I'm not scared of getting the C-section. I'm just like anxious about the recovery and what that would mean. I just wanted to share that like I still have my own fears. And there are also things that superhero moms do in the delivery room every day, all the time. So New York Dreamer asks, what would be your biggest piece of advice for a first time mama when giving birth? I'm 38 weeks today. I just can't wait to have her here. Yay, I'm so excited for you, New York Dreamer. You might even have her by the time I post this video, maybe. We'll see. But hopefully I'm here in time to give you a little advice. I would say birth plans have gotten hugely popular. They were just on the rise when I first had Bailey. And I think that it's cool to have that if you feel like a need to write out your plan. But my huge piece of advice is to not get so stuck on anything being a certain way. And I think that something's gonna be different no matter what it is, small or big things will be different than what you envision. And I think that if you narrow yourself into this mindset of it has to go this way, that you're setting yourself up for a feeling of fa failure or a feeling of fear. While I do think it's totally cool to have an idea of like what you want, I also think approaching things with an open mind and adaptability is really, really good. It always makes me so sad when I hear somebody who who's disappointed in their birth experience because it didn't match up with what they had wanted. And not that those feelings aren't valid, I just wouldn't want those feelings to exist because they were manifested by a desire for things to go a certain way. And I really think that all birth experiences are so, so, so special and important and not something to be looked back on with 
regret or sadness. So I understand looking back on it and being like, man, I wish I had done it this way or I wish I had done this differently or, oh man, if I had done this, maybe it wouldn't have ended up like this. But I also feel like the more you focus early on on it having to be a certain way, then that, that's setting yourself up to fail more. And be open to accepting whatever your body needs in that moment. I know people who come from a non-medicated birth standpoint where they'll say, put in your birth plan, even if I ask for an epidural, don't give me one. And they really strongly have that opinion. And I really strongly disagree, especially when you're asking your partner or your birth support person to tell you no. I think that's really terrible. And I, I feel like I might, I might upset people by saying that, but I really feel like if in a moment you need something, then you should have the freedom to ask for it. I just, I think that's really important. Obviously do whatever you're gonna do. And if that's something you really wanna commit to I get it I just I think you need like a safe word or something where you're like no actually this is fine you can you can give me pain medication or you could do this just because you you don't know until you're there how you're gonna feel brewery vision says I'm terrified of the after getting out of bed stitches blood going to the bathroom soreness recovering down there when does your body feel normal again okay being terrified of the after I don't think is as necessary because it's amazing how much that week after giving birth to a baby disappears into oblivion and you're focused on your baby and you're very tired and a lot of stuff's going on down there and you're kind of like i don't care <laughs> like i feel like if i didn't have a brand new baby to care for i'd probably be like with a mirror investigating trying to figure it all out but it's amazing how much that stuff doesn't bother you in the way it does when you think about it before it's happening. It's very weird. And also modesty, like all modesty, I think there's a chemical response that goes in your body where you like, you're like, yeah, <laughs> what's wrong with being naked right now? And <laughs> like, it's amazing how much certain things don't bother you the way they would in any other point in your life. But at the same time, you're very shocked. You're like, wait, what is going on? The clots are gonna be how big? Why didn't people tell me this? Like, what is going on? <laughs> but it's also like, all right, like, sure, just, okay. It's not that big of a deal in the moment, it, and it's always gonna be surprising. You're gonna kind of be like, wait, what's going on? Okay, sure. <laughs> it's not as painful or as stressful. Definitely get medication. Um, <laughs> they'll offer you like pills and stuff, like Tylenol or something. Take it and expect to still feel contractions, especially if you're like nursing or something, you get these really strong contractions that are not as strong as labor, but close. And it's kind of a surprise. You're like, wait, I'm still dealing with this, but it's okay. And that week goes by so fast. I know my doctors have told me, oh, we're just doing a couple stitches. And I think that they're internal, but like, I've never seen them. I haven't put much thought into them. <laughs> they give you numbing spray and they give you a bunch of different tools to like manage your business. But it's not like if at any other point in your life, you got stitches down there. It, I mean, I can't imagine. If I got, if I had some sort of inner injury that led towards stitches and it wasn't from having a baby, I think it would be like the biggest drama of my life. But for some reason, it doesn't seem to matter as much in that week. And as far as your body feeling normal again, you're supposed to give yourself at least like a six week recovery. That's how long it takes for your cervix to close. And you really will feel a lot better before six weeks. Typically, it depends on what your, the extent of your injuries, I don't know what you'd call it, but the extent of what happened. So typically they say a minimum of six weeks of like pelvic recovery. I feel like around two to three weeks, if things have been very typical, like in my experience, you're still getting like heavy bleeding. I can't remember when that stops, so I don't wanna like give you the exact scientific time of when your bleeding needs to chill out. Definitely ask your doctor. You're not really feeling like a lot of pain, discomfort, like you're kind of feeling a lot better, especially around three to four weeks. But in my experience, I was also breastfeeding with my other four kids. I don't know what will happen with this kid. I mean, I hope, I hope to breastfeed our new baby, but I don't know what will happen just because you never know. You have a new adjustment and the breastfeeding adjustment is a new body adjustment too. That's a new experience. And I don't wanna say your body feels like back to normal because you're then navigating that. But I will say a typical like down below recovery, they say is like six weeks. I think you're feeling a lot better within three weeks. I'll update you 
month after this next baby with more like more specific time timeline for that. But then with nursing, like you really are, that's a whole new thing to navigate. So you don't feel completely normal and your body's a new shape. So it depends on how much you care about that, like how that affects you emotionally. It's weird. I feel like when I when I had Duncan, I like gave birth and I was like, dang, <laughs> like you still have a giant tummy. But at the same time, I was like, oh, like I feel so thin. And then within like a month, I was like, I don't feel so good about myself. Like I feel a little awkward about my postpartum body. And I always try to like not, like I try really hard mentally to just like accept myself for how I am. But I do feel like that's in there. like at least for a lot of women, maybe not, hopefully not all, ideally no one. I still think that there's this psychological aspect, like a thing you go through where you're like really struggling with your body, even though, oh my gosh, I have never seen a woman who's just given birth and I've judged her for one second, you know? Like, and I try to remember that, like, I don't care what a woman's body looks like after they've delivered a child. I'm like, you're a superstar, you're amazing, you rock. For me, it does affect me a bit. And I, I wish it didn't because I really, really strongly feel that women's bodies are like beautiful and amazing. And I just like really respect what they can do. And then I still go through that, this feeling of like feeling kind of just gross or, or not how I want to look. I wanted to talk to you guys about that because that's like really, that's a thing that happens with me and I wish it didn't. And I don't think that about other people but I still like, I struggle with that emotionally. And I don't feel that in pregnancy. In pregnancy, I'm like, yes, the stomach has a reason to be here. And I like, I love that. And I typically feel really, really body positive during pregnancy. And I know some women don't have that experience. And then I really go through it a little bit in the postpartum, it's hard for me. All right, Jennifer asks, what are things you do to help your body be ready for labor? I do nothing. And I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, with the exception of maybe some like perineum massage, which I've heard now is being questioned whether that works or not, but I haven't had much tearing, so maybe that's connected in a positive way. But basically I don't do anything else. And I want to say that because I don't want you to be scared if you haven't done like some sort of physical preparation. I don't want you to either feel guilty that you weren't strong enough going into labor or feel like you haven't done enough because like your body can do this. My body can do this. And if it if it doesn't happen the way you envisioned, it's not because of something you did or didn't do. Kelly Anderson asks, what is the first thing you wanted to eat after giving birth? Basically my answer is everything. <laughs> it's one of my first requests is like, bring on that hospital menu. And then I found out in my last pregnancy that a lot of my friends like actually have fancy food like ready for them. Like one of my friends has like a cheesecake from Cheesecake Factory and they'll like have these fancy meals all prepped for once they deliver. That is some good planning. I really respect that. I had no idea. I just like go wild with the hospital menu. It's often French toast, but it depends on when you deliver because they serve th different things at different times, but basically the whole wide world because it's the first time I don't have heartburn in like nine months. Alex wants to know if I have a playlist of songs or songs that make labor go faster. This is something I 100% don't do. And I think if Christopher was the one to give birth, he would have like all this music prepared and be really into it. I'm not that into music. I've never set up any sort of music while I'm in a delivery room. It's not something I want to hassle with. But if, if, if you're like pumped up by music, like totally do it, but it doesn't do it for me. So, oh my goodness, I hope that this was helpful or exciting or interesting for you guys out there. I know so many people have different birth stories. I would love for you to share them in the comments below. And just like, if you have a different experience, please share it. Or if you have the same experience, share it. I think that the internet can be such a great place for us to share our experiences and become educated. And also, man, that third trimester of pregnancy where I'm at right now, is just such a time of like waiting and curiosity and you don't know what's gonna happen. And it's, it's a time where you like, want to learn and hear stories. So please share, especially positive um, stories about birth. Go ahead and share like your realities. Try not to like really freak anybody out if you have like a really scary story. And by anybody, I mean me because oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm about to do this here. And I will be reading all your comments. I love stories like this. Address whatever you want to address of what I'm talking about, but do it in a way that's kind. Like let's talk and have discussions, but please um, try to make things civil and and let's learn. Let's learn about 
childbirth. I'm so excited. I, I can have my baby soon, like in like five to six weeks. I'm having a baby. Oh my gosh.